All right, another update on the planter. So we got our new standard down pressure springs on. So now we have one per each side on each row unit. And that was a, those are all parts or shoops if you do need them. So you can get, so some of them I, I had the brackets and now honestly thinking about it, uh, I'd probably just get new, new brackets since some of them were kind of rough, but here's one, a new one, what a new one looks like. So uh, the only thing is with these pins, you have to buy the washers and the clevis pins separate. So it's so the one bad thing about it. It'd be nice if they were just came in the kit, but anyways, so we got all them on. Um, I don't really have them set. Some of them are still pretty loose. That one still needs to be tightened up, but I'm gonna kind of read the book and see kind of how we want. It's gonna be kind of an experiment to see how, how much down pressure we need. Um, we've got fairly light sandy soil that's been tilled. So I don't think we're gonna need a ton of down pressure, but I want enough that uh, with a little bit of corn residue that's gonna be out there that'll kind of keep the row units from bouncing too much. So the other thing, uh, I did get new idlers for the drives. Um, and I'm not sure, some of them don't look too bad. So we might try to run. We don't really have a lot to do with this planter this year. So I might just try running them. But one thing I am doing is upgrading the tensioners on the actual row unit chains. So there's the new one. So you can see it actually completely encapsulates the chain to keep it from coming off. And here is an old one. So there's, some people do complain about issues with residue, things like that. Um, actually getting in here and knocking the chain off of there causing issues. So that's an upgrade. Uh, kit from Shoops, so you get all new hardware, everything. And there's the part number if you want it. Relatively cheap, I think like six or seven bucks a row. Um, so not too bad. So to do it, you do have to split your chain, which now would be a good time to replace your chain. Um, these aren't too bad. I think they just are kind of cruddy just from sitting, but honestly, for the price of these chains, it'd probably be worthwhile to just replace them. So all you gotta do is you split the chain, find your link, take your link apart, and then it's a 3 8 carriage bolt. Take off that nut 9 16 and you can basically pop the whole assembly through. And I'll show you here in another row uh, what it's like to put the new one in. It's really not bad. Maybe took me five minutes or so. Kind of once you once you figure out the orientation of the spring and how it works to get tension on it, it's really simple. All right, so here's the instructions. So the picture is not great, but once you do one, it, it really makes sense and it's pretty simple. So basically you slide the carriage bolt in, one inch bushing spring fender washer, and then the inch and three sixteenths bushing goes over, and then the idler goes over that, and then you've got a flat washer and a lock nut. So pretty simple. Like I said, we'll sh I'll show you the easiest way to do this with the spring. Um, again, you gotta split the chain, which sometimes that's kind of a pain, depending on where the link's at, but in this case, most of them I've gotten pretty lucky where the link was at the top. I did have one that I kind of had to, once I got the chain apart, I kind of had to reposition it so it was gonna be easier to put together. So let's go ahead and get this in there. All right, so we got all the old hardware out. So we'll go ahead and take our carriage bolt, just start it in there for a second. And then the easiest way to do this is once you get the chain undone, you have to pull it out and the first thing I like to do, so you don't forget about this, is take your idler and put that on the chain. Actually, need that. And then we'll go ahead and reroute around the driven sprocket. be pretty good for now. Let me 
I get that a little bit more actually. Also make sure it's on the sprocket. There we go. Okay, so we kind of got that in a rough position. And you can see we'll have plenty, so should be fine there. So now, once this is on, this is what it's gonna look like. So the back, the back towards the back of the planter, chain should run over and then it should go under. And then this thing, the spring is gonna try to pull it forward to put tension on it. So I'll show you that. So to get this on there, we gotta put the small bushing. So that's the smaller bushing, it's supposed to be one inch. So start that on there. Okay. And your spring so here's the spring so when you put the spring in there you want to put it in just like that so I'm looking at this from the back of the planter or we'll come over to the side it might be a little bit easier so here's from the side so I want my fingers out of the way We want the spring to go like this. So the straight tang will go, focus, there we go. We'll go straight down and then you want the hook part to be out because that's gonna catch, uh, be the, I think it's the other side it'll end up being. So we'll slide that in there. that then you need the large fender washer and I gotta set the camera down for a minute find a good spot to set this like that so it should go small bushing and spring and then the washer and then your idler will go on there so we'll see if we can get that on there I'm not sure if we can do this one-handed or not easiest to do with no tension on the chain so have the chain completely off because you'll see in a second when we have to spin this around what we got to do okay so we got this on there right now I'm just sitting there so now you can get this bushing in there like that you may have to push the carriage bolt back in Fight me. Hang on a second. There we go. And then smaller washer and start your lock nut. Now, to get the spring set, what we're actually going to do is we're going to lift up and pull this thing all the way. And when you do this, this is why I do this with the this not just basically barely on there you're gonna have to spin this hook 
and catch the back side. So I'll show you that in a second. All right, so we're hooked on the back side, so it should be kind of facing, this thing kind of looks backwards right now, so it should be basically flipped all the way up. So now what happens is, is how this works, is as we pull back on that, and this looks all crooked because it's not tight, but as you tighten it, it will look kind of like this one right here. But now as we pull this back, it's put in tension, so it, it's, taking some force to hold that back. So now at this point, you can run this thing, get it snug, and then uh, get your chain back on. All right, and there you go. That's it. So pretty simple. So once you get going, and it goes pretty quick. I mean, it probably only took maybe a half hour or so to do i got four rows done so and it takes a little bit longer I'm trying to take a video of it so um really not a bad job at all if your tension your idlers and tensioners are starting to get worn it's definitely a cheap upgrade so check it out hope this helps someone